This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a 31-day trial absolutely free. If you look at what's on the road today, it's pretty apparent that the internal combustion engine still dominates the auto market. Gasoline-powered cars outnumber electric cars dozens of times over, but EVs are slowly but surely securing a foothold in markets around the world. While most people see electric cars as the shiny new toy of the automotive world, they're actually much older than you think. To find the first electric car, we have to travel back in time, all the way back to 1884 in the smoggy streets of London. Thomas Parker, the man responsible for electrifying the London Underground, was also responsible for bringing the first production electric car to market. There had been test vehicles over the past several years, but none of them were particularly reliable or roadworthy, so Parker's production model was really the first of its kind, made possible partly by his own new, high-capacity rechargeable batteries. Germany wasn't far behind, bringing their own electric car to market in 1888. Shortly after that, the United States caught on and produced their own six-passenger electric wagon, which could reach blistering speeds of 23 kilometers per hour. While production electric cars of the time weren't exactly speed demons, specialty EVs did hold some prestigious titles. On the 29th of April, 1899, driver Camille Janatzi finally broke the 100 km per hour speed barrier, reaching a top speed of 105.88 km per hour in the rocket-shaped Jamais Contente. Ferdinand Porsche also dabbled in electrics, producing the first all-wheel drive electric car, powered by a motor in each hub, which also went on to secure several world records. As the turn of the century rolled around, electric cars experienced a surge in popularity. A fleet of electric battery-powered taxis hit the streets of London in 1897, and in the same year in New York City, Samuel's Electric Carriage and Wagon Company introduced 12 electric hansom cabs for service, ramping up to 62 cabs before the group was reformed into the Electric Vehicle Company in 1898. The primary appeal of electric cars in the early 1900s was their ease of use. You didn't have to turn a hand crank or shift gears like gasoline-powered cars. You didn't have to wait 45 minutes for your ride to warm up like you did with steam-powered cars. And they were quiet, luxurious, and didn't smell bad like gas. Of course, all of these quality of life features and the novelty of the technology added up to the same problems many electric cars face today. They didn't have a great range, and they were prohibitively expensive. The EVs of the early 1900s became a luxury available only to the rich, and since the urban elites rarely needed to leave the city, the limited range really wasn't a problem. Early EVs did face a bit of a struggle through the first decade of the 20th century, as electricity was still not widely installed in homes. But by 1912, enough houses were wired for electricity and therefore able to charge electric cars that they quickly became far more feasible. At this point in history, 40% of vehicles in the US were steam-powered, 38% were electric, and 22% were gasoline-powered. This was the golden age of the electric car, but it was not to last. By the 1920s, new innovations had EVs on the ropes. Newer, much improved roadway infrastructure called for vehicles with greater range than what was available from electric cars. Around the world, many countries began to discover huge quantities of petroleum, which led to vastly more affordable gasoline, making gas-powered cars more economical over long distances. In addition to range, electric cars were outpaced in speed as well. EVs topped out around 24 to 32 kilometers per hour, whereas gasoline-powered cars could travel much more quickly. But it didn't stop there. The invention of the electric starter eliminated the need for a hand crank, and the invention of the muffler greatly reduced the noise of combustion engine vehicles. The final nail in the coffin for electric cars came shortly after, when Henry Ford decided to implement assembly line style production to crank out his cars. It was vastly more efficient than the previous method, and brought down the price of gasoline-powered cars considerably. In the meantime, the price for a comparable electric car had continued to rise. By 1912, you could get a faster, longer-ranged gasoline-powered car for half the price of an electric. Most electric car makers ceased production at some point before 1920, and the technology stagnated for decades. There were a few attempts to resurrect the idea, but cheap gas and the continued improvement of gasoline-powered vehicles made it very hard to make any progress in a highly competitive market. It wasn't until the 1990s and early aughts that electric car technology began to resurface. With the increased concern over pollution and the use of fossil fuels, automakers were pressured to comply with new regulations aimed at transitioning to more environmentally friendly vehicles. Some automakers complied, and some, like GM, famously obstructed, doing everything they could to try to prove that the public didn't want electric cars. It worked. It took Tesla building the first cool electric car, the Roadster, based on the Lotus Elise, to really pique the public's interest. After the success of the Roadster, Tesla began production of the Model S in 2012, and the second age of the EV finally began in earnest. 
Since then, we've seen both plug-in hybrid and fully electric vehicles from many of the largest manufacturers, with EVs quickly gaining traction, especially among younger buyers and those with deep enough pockets to spring for the top-of-the-line electric powerhouses like the Model S P100D, which is refined, luxurious, and can do 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. So while electric cars are nothing new, truly successful ones are. We'll just have to wait and see what's in store for today's EVs and those of the future. If you'd like to learn more about the history of cars, I highly recommend you check out Curiosity Stream's documentary series on classic cars, which documents six of the coolest cars America has ever produced. And if you're really into the subject of high-speed thrills, stay tuned for the April 18th launch of Speed, a Curiosity Stream series dedicated to humanity's desire to go further and faster. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers tons of great nonfiction content aimed at people on a lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. They've got over 2,000 documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on cars, which are some of my favorites. Their catalog also includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get a 31-day free trial by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during sign-up. Curiosity Stream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TV, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. Give Curiosity Stream a shot and sign up for your 31-day free trial by visiting curiositystream.com/secondthought and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT.